Hello and welcome back. Uh, if you've been joining with us as we've been reading through the New Testament as a congregation, we're going through the one-year Bible, and we're going to actually try to take it in two years here. Uh, but this year we're focusing on the Gospel text and also the Psalms and the Proverbs. So one of the Psalms that we read this past week, I think on April 27th, this, one of the Psalms for the day was Psalm 98. And so if you're behind, uh, let me help you get caught up here. And if you're ahead, let me take you back a little bit, and we'll dwell on uh, dwell on some of the some of the meaning behind this psalm in Psalm chapter 98. So I'll go ahead and I'll start reading it, and then I'll share some thoughts with you. Psalm chapter 98, a psalm. O sing to the Lord a new song, for He has done wonderful things. His right hand and His holy arm have gained the victory for Him. The Lord has made known His salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his loving kindness and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Bring forth, break forth and sing for joy and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre and with the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout joyfully before the king, of, before the, king the Lord. Let the sea roar in all it contains, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands, let the mountains sing together for joy before the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. The psalmist begins with a call to sing to the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. He has done wonderful things. And as we look at the psalm, we see some of those wonderful things that the Lord has done. In verse 2, he says right off the bat, The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He's made known his salvation. And we know in, in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, this the way in which God has revealed to us his salvation. In Romans 5, 8 says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us in this, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so we see that Christ dying on the cross for our sins is our salvation, that he has made known that to us, that as we look back to that historical event, we know that this is how God deals with our sin. This is how God has come to save us as well. He sent his son to do that. Uh, moving on, verse 2, he says he's revealed his righteousness in the sight of nations. Notice here, it's not just one group of people. But it's the sight of nations. God's salvation is for all people. Uh, he desires for all to be saved. But he's revealed his righteousness in the sight of nations. And again, that's seen for us in Christ on the cross. It's not only revealed in Christ on the cross, but it's also been accomplished in Christ on the cross. Uh, theologians sometimes talk about the great exchange, where we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and we see that Christ, who knew no sin, became sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Uh, Christ on that cross, he took all of our sin that we have done in the past, all of the sin that, that we'll do today, that, that we'll do in the future, and he's paid the penalty for that. And instead he gives to us his righteousness so that as God looks at us, he doesn't see our actions and our deeds or our goodness or our, our lack of goodness per se, but instead, he sees Christ, and he sees Christ's perfect righteousness. Verse 3, He has remembered his loving kindness and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. And as God looks down, he sees those righteous robes of Christ, that, that those believers who are robed in righteousness, those believers who are forgiven and, and uh, cleansed by grace through faith, through the finished work of Jesus Christ, God remembers his loving kindness. He remembers his patience. He remembers his covenant that he has made with them. He remembers that their sin is removed as far as the east is from the west for the sake of Christ. And so we have no fear as we approach God because of what Christ has done. And so the psalmist said, oh, I'll go back to this. Uh, he remembers his loving kindness and his faithfulness. And this is why we don't fall over dead every time we sin. This is why we don't fall over dead the second that we sin. It's because God has been gracious to you. God desires to be gracious to you. God desires to forgive you. And every day that you are alive is a day to remember his grace. Every day that God gives you breath is a day to seek his forgiveness. Is a day to repent and to be forgiven. 
to remember that loving kindness of the Lord, to remember our own wretchedness, to confess of that, to repent of that, and to see what Christ has done in order to cleanse us and purify us from all unrighteousness and his death on the cross and to receive that righteousness of Christ. And then in verses 4 through 6, there's a call to praise. Because of the goodness and the great mercy of what God has accomplished for us in Christ, shout joyfully to the Lord all the earth. Break forth and sing for joy and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and with the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout joyfully before the King, the Lord. Again, praise the Lord and shout joyfully before the King, for he has done this wonderful thing. And then in verses 7 and 8, creation gets involved. These inanimate objects of creation that that we are aware of, that we live amongst, uh, that we don't necessarily see doing these things. But here in poetic language, the writer is explaining the tremendous joy the creation has when the Lord returns again. Let the sea roar and all it contains, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy before the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. Creation currently suffers under the curse of sin. It can't sin. Uh, Rocks can't sin. Trees can't sin. Water can't sin. People sin. And because of man's sin, we've brought this curse into this world. So all creation groans. Uh, Creation groans around us. We see pollution as a result of sin, we see death as a result of sin, death of crops. Uh, we see drought, we see disease, natural disasters, flooding, you name it. All of these things are a result of sin in this world. And each one of these things is a, an aspect of creation groaning and longing to be redeemed, longing to be the way that it was originally created, that God created it to be in the Garden of Eden. When man will take care of it as it was originally supposed to be, in the Garden of Eden. And so creation waits for and longs for Christ's return. You can look at Romans chapter 8 and you see Paul talking about that in his uh, epistle to the Romans. And finally, verse 9, Before the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth, he will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. The Lord is coming again to judge the earth. And so now is a period of, of waiting, a period of work, For believers, as we get about the work of of God's kingdom, of sharing his word with those around us, Uh, but Christ is coming back. And when he comes back, he will judge which with righteousness. And so the question for you is, what righteousness are you trusting in today? Are you trusting in your own righteousness? Or are you trusting in Christ's righteousness? If you're trusting in Jesus, then Christ's return is a cause for joy and excitement, a day of Uh, great things, a day of hope for you when Christ comes back to bring you to live with him forever in all eternity in heaven. But if you're trusting in your own righteousness, and this can come in all kinds of shapes or forms, whether you're trusting in your goodness, in your own ability to keep the law, or or your own ability to to wrestle with temptation and, and to say no to temptation, your own ability to stop sinning or to not sin, your own victory over temptation, or your own good works, whatever it might be, if this is the righteousness that you're trusting in, then on the day of Christ's return, when all of your idols are laid bare and you become brutally aware of the holiness of God and how righteous and pure and holy that he is, and you see your sin for what it is, you immediately are undone. And you know that, that there is no hope for you because all of your idols, all of your righteousness is nothing. It says filthy rags in God's sight. But don't despair because there is still hope for you today. As you still breathe, live, and and take another breath, that means that today is a day of grace for you. There is no hope if you are trusting in your own righteousness. But again, go back to verse 2 of this psalm. The Lord has made known his salvation and he has revealed his righteousness in the sight of nations. That remember what Christ has done for you. That he died on the cross for your sins. And yes, your sin was atoned for there on the cross. That he has revealed his righteousness. And not only does he reveal his righteousness, but he gives his righteousness to us. So that as God looks at us, he doesn't see my own actions or my own ability to stop sinning. But he sees Christ. And he sees Christ who is tempted in every way that we are, yet without sin. And he sees his perfect 
holiness and righteousness. And as we trust in the finished work of Christ, as we trust in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection for our forgiveness and for our righteousness, we have nothing to fear when Christ returns. But that too will be a day of joy and excitement and glory and praise for us. Let's pray. Father God, we do thank you and we praise you for your word and for its truth. We thank you that in your word you've revealed to us your righteousness and your salvation, not only to us, Lord, but you reveal your salvation to the ends of the earth, to every nation. We praise you for that. God, I pray that you would help us to no longer trust in ourselves or our own righteousness, but to trust in Christ and his righteousness and what he has done for us. Lord, we thank you for your love and kindness. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love, grace, and mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you and have a great day.